So the spinal tap in itself is primarily used as a diagnostic tool, which is why it's not done repeatedly. If, if it's done repeatedly, that means that the first time it was negative, the subsequent time it might've been positive. So the presence of the oligoclonal of bands is sort of the key item looked for, typically in isolation. If, for example, it shows increased protein, it shows what, what is sometimes termed increased cellularity, like uh, white blood cells are there and things like that, that suggests that person may have a different problem. They may have MS, but they also may have something called sarcoidosis. They may also have some uh, inflammatory, direct inflammatory disorder that presented like MS, but it's probably not MS or probably MS plus something, other disorder. And so the spine tap is done to remove other things from the diagnosis and try to confirm as all possible with the right clinical setting, the right graphic pictures that this person has MS. And so because it's done diagnostically only, it's not done for convalescence or future studies or future review. The number of bands is contingent upon the lab that is done in. For example, here in Charleston uh, at my university, if a person has more than one oligoclonal band, then that person has elevated oligoclonal bands with the right MRI picture, right clinical picture, that person findings are consistent with multiple sclerosis. There's another place in the upper part of the state where for them, a, a, more than four bands are, I'm sorry, four or more bands are required to be elevated because their standard is different. So there's a variability in what is considered uh, relevant and not relevant as well. But the key thing is not to have elevated protein, not to have increased cellularity or cells in that spinal fluid. Then with the right setting, that person has MS.